came here first in 2004 and I've been based in Shanghai since 10 years now. Uh, I have my family here, my wife is Shanghainese and uh, we, have, uh, we have a son as well. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, I'm half Chinese now. Well, the story of uh, this Shanghai circuit is that it was actually opened in 2004 uh, for Formula One. Uh, actually, I was here for the first F1 race, I was doing the support race, so it's a track that has a lot of meaning for me. The layout of this track is quite interesting because if you take an aerial view, if you look at the circuit from the top, uh, it's actually a, Shanghai, a Chinese character that means Shanghai. Uh, for me the track means home, a very very long straight and very atypical corners uh, with long radius. It's the penultimate round of the 2016 FIA World Endurance Championship and we've made it to the mightily impressive Shanghai International Circuit. It's 5.4 kilometres of demanding track, long straights, tight turns and it all starts with that never-ending right-hander at Turn 1. So let's see what the drivers make of it. I think it's uh, one of the most complicated corners on the year, so it's why uh, yeah, we have to look what we will do here. For sure uh, we can gain a lot of time here, but you can lose also a lot, you know, with our car, with all this hybrid uh, technology on board, what, uh, what we can do in terms of recube, braking and so on. Uh, it can help the car a lot, so it's uh, the key corner of the weekend. very difficult because it's tighter at the end, last corner, and we cannot miss the apex. If you miss the apex in the last part, you are far and you lose a lot of time. goes in with with camber in the beginning it looks like and then it's off camber here so the rest of the corner is going to be interesting when you come to this point at least. Go full gas, you will gain a lot of speed. Maybe, always. Neil, do you want a job? Would you like a job? Clap it. That's Whatever right. that means. Oh, <laughs> Action between Louise and Romain. Hi! How are you? Here you have to try to get the best exit you want you can to have the best top speed at the end of the straight. Very important corner again. And uh, yeah, I think it's uh, not easy to overtake all the car here with the GT and uh, because the speed difference is very important, but a nice corner. I think obviously the main importance is getting a really fast run out because it's obviously an extremely long straight afterwards. So I think through that first left it'll be important to get a good placement of the car through the next right to then hopefully open up the car as much as possible for the long straight. We've become accustomed to a large and enthusiastic audience at the Shanghai International Circuit. 
And for race day 2016, we weren't disappointed. The drivers eager to get out to meet and greet their fans. Perfect. Fantastic to see so many fans turn out for the race. Hopefully we're going to see another fascinating battle. Racing is quite a new sport in China. To be honest, uh, in some ways, it's only just a little over 10 years old. As motorsports is picking up and as more and more Chinese drivers and teams are participating, I think it's natural that spectators are more drawn to this sport. Great, China, we love you. And as race time is approaching, Jackie Chan, local legend on the grid, providing another attraction for the fans. I've been doing a racing more than 30 years. I have a Jackie Chan racing team in Macau and Zhuhai and also in Shanghai and also the Paris Dakar. Uh, I'm the captain. So, so many years, but for the last couple of years, it's so busy. But now I come back again. Uh, I just, you know, all, all the young men, all young men, we love race. Superstars of endurance racing on the grid. Jacques Lafitte, Tom Christensen, and Jackie X. The FIA World Endurance Championship coming to the end of only its fifth season, but already firmly established in the world of motorsport. When I see the crowd like here in uh, Shanghai, when I see uh, uh, the goals long distance racing has done, who has become a Formula One race almost every race, I think we must be pleased. In GTE Arm, um, another pole position, their fifth of the season for the 98 Aston Martin. In GTE Pro, just like Japan, it's an all Ford front row. Harry Tinknell and Andy Prio haven't been to the track before, but that didn't stop them taking pole position. We had a tough time in uh, free practice, getting the car right, learning the track, and then to put it on pole, we were very happy. Um, the Fuji race was phenomenal. We had a mega battle between 66 and 67, one second for five hours, and it was a really tough race, and I think today also will be the same. Just in front of the Ford, the back of the LMP2 grid has the Alpine A460 Nissan of DC Baxi Racing, local favorites. It's a new team on pole position in LMP2, Mana Racing with their 44 car, Lining up alongside them, the championship leading Signatech Alpine, who need a clean race to confirm the championship here in China. At the front of the field, the qualifying was very tight. Under six tenths of a second for the top six cars. All of the teams throwing plenty of tyres at their qualifying session to try and get the best position. And the three manufacturers with one car each in the top three qualifying positions. Porsche lead the manufacturer's standings and have one thing in mind with the number one car on pole position. We want to secure the manufacturer's championship for Porsche, but we know we have a lot of pressure from uh, the other competitors. And that's, how, that's what the fans want to see. They want to see close racing. But I think the pole is a small advantage and I hope we can turn it into a victory, but definitely that's the goal. As we've come to expect here in WEC, qualifying was close once again, but it was the number one Porsche that took the pole. Now they won here last year, so they're going to be looking to take maximum points to ensure that Porsche take the manufacturer's title. <laughs>
Jackie Chan with the green flag for the start of two formation laps. Brennan Hartley leading the field away on the long front straight here in China. Porsche and Toyota Kazoo racing on row one. Audi and Toyota on row two. Audi and Porsche on row three. Mana with pole position in LMP2, but watch that 26G drive car. Alex Brundle raced to the front of the grid here last year. Ford have locked out the front row in GTE Pro, and Aston Martin have the arm pole. Okay, pole position, now it's up to you. Pole position, keep up the place, please. Six hours on the clock, Brennan Hartley on the left-hand side, red goes to green, where racing's got a decent start, but Buemi, oh, look at Buemi coming down the outside. He's got an absolute corker into turn one. Toyota leads here in Shanghai, and it looks like Mike Conway's going up into second. Looked like there might have been a little bit of contact behind there. Yes, there's certainly something going on, as it is Toyota and Toyota first and second, but here's Hartley coming back round the outside. Doesn't want to give up second position. The Audi's right in there as well. Magnificent stuff. Has anybody told these guys there's five hours and 59 and a half minutes still to go? Out halfway around the first lap, and it's still Toyota leading. But how much hybrid energy has Buemi used? Got a cracking start, rocket ship quick down into the first corner. Brendan Hartley holding on back in second position as they come onto the back straight for the first time, and Hartley goes for the lead. Maybe he did have a little more power left in the batteries. And the safety car's out. The safety car's out as Hartley goes back through into the lead. I think he just got that done in time. There's the yellow flags waving enthusiastically on the right-hand side in the background. Oh, and it's... Oh, it's the 45 manner. I thought it was the pole centre there for a moment. Matthias Besch. Now, did he jump or was he pushed? No, he lost it on his own. Oh, my goodness, he's just missed the Ford and he's hit one of the Aston Martins. That was Richie Stanaway, I think, in the 97 car. Oh, that's not going to polish out. Ah, uh, over, game over. Well, I think the mechanics will want to have a look at that left front, see if it is fixable. Matthias Besch, oh, what a shame for him. That's serious damage to the left front of that 97 Aston Martin. Here's the 71 Ferrari coming in, AF Corsa, we're hearing left rear puncture. So emergency service required while the safety car is out. Manufacturers titling GT very, very closely poised and both Aston Martin and Ferrari with problems early. So under green flag again and Brendan Hartley has pulled away from the pack. Here's the Audi going down the outside, hybrid power deployed and that is a position changing over. Second place now then. Look at the battles going on behind as well. Buemi down into third. This is looking from Mike Conway's car, forward at another Audi. That's the seven car. Comes out in the final corner and slows right down. Now, has he used too much boost? It must have been. Looks like he stood on the brake there. But that's the difference between having the hybrid energy to deploy or just using the internal combustion engine. Now, this is LMP2. One mana already out. The Paul sitting car down to second position at the moment, and the two Alexes, Lynn and Brundle, are battling it out. Signatec Alpine, that blue car is the leader. Then the red and white of Mana, Alex Lynn, GP2 superstar. GTE Pro, Paul Sitter out in front of a new second place car, that is the Ferrari. Stefan Muck has dropped down to third in the second Ford. That Ford gaining down the back straight? I think it is, but not enough to challenge at the hairpin at turn 14. Mucker goes down the inside, is there a chance? No. Now, Ben Barker leading GTE Am, but he had a jump start too early on the right-hand pedal, and he'll have to pull into the pits. Pedro Lamy sitting just behind him will take back the lead. Remember the 98 car, the Aston, started in pole position. New second position in LMP2. That's Alex Lynn. He's now down in third for Manor. And Alex Brundle has gone by. 
and Brundle now setting his sights on the leader. This is how he got second position. Classic overtaking manoeuvre here at Shanghai. Down the inside under breaking to the hairpin. Well, Brundle's at it again. Down the long backs to it. Looks like he's in the same position he was to get second. And he is, and he takes the lead. Remember that 36 car leading the championship. No heroics needed there. Well, fighting back a little bit. I'm not sure that's going to go down well in the pit lane. There's the replay. Pretty standard stuff, and Roman Rusinov likes that. And look at the debris from the tyres already, and we're only half an hour in. Going offline to overtake, very dangerous for these LMP1 guys. Getting dirt on the tyres. Now this is on board with the Toyota looking forward to the Porsche. And traffic, well traffic's going to be an issue all the way through now. And there was the pass that swapped those two positions. Oh my goodness, three wide for a moment there. The two Toyotas changing positions. G driving behind is the leader in LMP2. Through turn 16, keep it on the track. Can't go too wide there. Eduardo Freitas, our race director, very hot on the exit of 16. And there is the battle for second position in GTE Pro, AF Corsa versus Ford. And for the moment, the AF Corsa just has it. Mucker tries to come round the outside and does it. Does he stay on the track? He does. Magnificent manoeuvre. And Ford's back to one and two then in GTE Pro. Remember, that is only second position now for Stefan Mucker. Andy Prior is well up the road from this battle. And Oli Pla likes that. Second, third, fourth in GTE Am. And that is Pat Long in the black, white and blue Porsche going through. Well, is he? Has he held on to that? Car on the right-hand side is the one making the move. Yes, Pat Long, the Californian. Nice overtake. Now, pit stops. This is about the right time, so these are standard stops for LMP2. SMP Racing coming in and the 43. That's the RGR Sport car. Rather further down than I think they would have liked. Trying to keep the championship alive, that dark red car. Driver change there. Oh, and that was a very quick pit stop by the 31 ESM car. I think he's jumped one, possibly both of them. Yes, had to hold the 27. Look to the left-hand side, there's a car coming through. And there's the confirmation. The green 31 getting out ahead of both of those cars that were in front of it on the road. Slow stop there for the SMP. And indeed, the Baxi DC car's gone past it in the pit lane as well. Unfortunately, um... On the first corner, Bash spun around the outside and, and he was coming towards me, so I had to let the lift off. Uh, the SMP went by and it's just a, it's a shame because they are very fast on the street, but very strong pace. And uh, I couldn't overtake him. He was just blocking very aggressively as well whenever he had the chance to. So, yeah, I mean, the race is uh, not over, it's far from over, but uh, definitely a little dent on our, on our hopes to stay in front of on the championship. This is second place in GTE AM, certainly not AM drivers here, has to be one non-pro, but Pat Long, Porsche Works driver, not so very long ago, goes down the inside of a Manu Collard, and that is second place, Collard not fighting so hard, he's in with the chance of the championship with that Ferrari, two big names in the GTE AM category. Side by side for fifth position in LMP2, Petrov goes through on Chris Cumming, and that is Gonzalez, that's the seventh place car. My goodness, what a scrap that is. Through turn one, dropping down through two to three. Look at the drop there, you can see the wall on the right hand side. That is a long way downhill. And Gonzalez having a little look up the inside of the Canadian in that black and green car. Goes to the right now. Offline a little bit here, but that's a nice move by Gonzalez. And goes through. Sixth position then for the 43 car. They're not having a great day to day. Need a win to keep that championship alive.
Gonzalez now has closed in on that fifth position. This is at the hairpin. Has a look down the inside. Not quite close. And oh, he is close enough. Brilliant stuff. Well, I do think he's been one of the best, if not the best, gentleman drivers this year. And now up into fifth position. In from the lead of GTE Am, the 98 Aston Martin. Pedro Lamy will get out. And that's Paul Delalana getting into the car. What a season he's having as well. A lot of activity in the number eight Audi pit, but it's too early for that eight car to come in. Let's have a listen. How many left to go, Lucas? We might have had a problem with the fuel rig, so it might be just four more laps after this one. Oh, that's a shame. That's going to take them off strategy. Problems for Audi Sport Team Yost. Well, the Audi is into the pits. It is a little bit early. Louise is down in the pit lane with Dr. Wolfgang Ulrich, head of Audi Sport. The reason was that uh, at the first pit stop, there was a problem with the fuel system and we couldn't fill the car completely. It was only half full. And so we had to come in. When the, when, when the half tank was empty, the problem is we couldn't refill it again fully. So we have to find out what the problem is. Two SMP teammates. Petrov and Alushin. Alushin just out of IndyCar, another big name coming to the last few rounds of the championship. They are teammates, so they won't be fighting too hard. What am I saying? Nearly come together and a lock up there by Andre Lotterer. He nearly hit them as well. And one of the Alpines in there as well with a little bit of damage. I think he might have run into the back of the Audi. Proper old fashioned lock up here. And oh, so close. It didn't look like there was any contact there, but there's certainly some... Now, is that a bit of blue on that piece of headlight glass? Yes, it is. It's the 35. Hoping tongue. Headlamp damage on the left-hand side, so he must have run at the back of the Audi when Lotterer was checking up to avoid the two SMPs. It will be a new nose cone then for that Baxi DC car. Hoping getting out, and here's the onboard. He's going to run at the back of the Audi here. Oh, no, he's not. Carla Del Cabezi coming in from the left-hand side. Not Carla's fault. He was trying to avoid the accident in front of him. The championship leader in second position comes in. Nico Lapierre already out of that car as the tyres go on. Gustavo Menezes has been installed. This is very methodical. You don't want to lose a wheel. That could cost them the championship at this point. Yeah, well done, guys. Turn one is very tricky, there is different lines, so you never quite know where the car will go and uh, I had a bit of misunderstanding with the Ferrari and we touch. So we try to avoid that because we just want to finish the race, you know, we are looking for the championship here, so finger crossed. Alex Brundle once again, faultless drive, this time at the start of the race in Japan, it was the middle two stints and he gives over to Roman Rusinov. Number 26 car in the lead. Two Toyotas have been battling all race, and that's Anthony Davidson going through into second. Stefan Sarazan down into third. Look at all the rubbish on the left-hand side. All the debris from the tyres. Brendan Hartley completing his second stint. He'll get out of the number one car. Led pretty much all the way, just a few metres when Buemi got ahead at the very start. Oh, new nose for the number one Porsche. Now, I didn't see any accident damage on that car. Timo Bernard will take that car out. It was a good two stints. I just tried to keep it clean. Unfortunately, we just had to change a nose. Um, massive clump of rubber hit the, hit the front nose and damaged it. So we just changed it, uh, which lost us maybe 12 seconds. But yeah, we're in good shape. It's still pretty close. I just had a look at the times. Audi's still right there. I'm not sure what happened to the number... I think it was the number eight that had a problem, but... Yeah, long way to go. Back into the pits, and this is too early. Round about eight or nine laps early, I reckon, for Duval. Suggest the problem isn't fixed with that fuel hose. Been a lot of work going on in the Audi pit before he came back into the lane. How many laps did we do? Look, you've done 21. It'll be 22 now. So it's fuel and tires. Press the no cut, leaving the last corner. 
Yeah, this is, I'm afraid, not good news going through the race with a, an issue on refueling. Everybody standing with stopwatch, including Alan McNish there, trying to work out what the issue is, whether it's the horse or the car that's the problem. On a touch on the back straight there, the prototype from SMP, and that's Pierre Rag getting a little hip check there in the 50 Corvette. Now, I don't think that was anything deliberate. Trying to stay off the marbles, I'd say, yes, absolutely. You can see all the debris to drivers right there. You don't want that on your tyres. Third position in GT Pro, important for the two drivers and for the manufacturers. Aston Martin with just a three-point edge over Ferrari as they came into this race. Jimmy Bruni in the bright red Ferrari almost touches the back of Marco Sorensen, then goes to his left. That's round the outside of turn one and two. Now, can Jimmy tough it out and stay on that outside line? That means he'll get the inside for the downhill turn three. He's a bit wide there, not sure he's going to make it, but dives to the inside and does get through. Tightens his line through turn three as well. That's very fair driving from Bruni and good driving from both. Sorensen and Bruni change positions, but give us plenty of excitement. Great driving by both men. Racing room asked for and given. And that is our move of the race for China. Significant for the championship for manufacturers and also for the sportsmanship of both of these drivers. Bruni with very little grip on the outside. Sorensen giving him the room. The pass made, no paint traded. The pole sitter from GT Pro, Andy Prio, now back in the car. Harry Tinknell's done his stint and they are driving away. Even their own teammates can't keep pace with them. This is a carbon copy of Fuji a couple of weeks ago. And here is the teammate, that's Stefan Mucker going off. And was there a problem with the car there? Seemed a bit squirrely under braking, the back end weaving around. And then, oh, that was a touch there from the Toyota. Let me know if any contact with this car. No, no contact, it's just crazy, guys. Well, there wasn't contact there, but I think Mucker might be struggling with a problem. Mark Leib in the number two Porsche comes to the first corner. Second position, third for Kobayashi, and Kobayashi is closing him down. Let's have a listen to the radio. OK, can we, so we catch car two. Car one is doing 470 when Well, he is catching him. Simple as that. A little bit of encouragement. Car six behind, he's fourth position. And he's catching you. I think was the bit that didn't have to be said to Mark Lee. Well, this has been a great drive back by Kobayashi. Goes down the inside into second position at the final quarter, but he hasn't got any hybrid energy left. We've seen this before. Both sides of the Ferrari and the G-Drive leading LMP2, that orange and black car, into turn one, and Mark Lee gets second position back. Kobayashi, though, still in a position to strike. I have a feeling we've not seen the last of this. Lovely to see the different strengths, weaknesses of the cars around the 3.288-mile circuit here at Shanghai. Kobayashi down the inside again. And again he goes up into second position, but Mark Lieb has good traction this time. I thought his tyres might have been going a little bit. Goes round the outside. Can't make that one stick, the SMP this time, the piggy in the middle. Romain Dumas looking on. His teammate now dropped down to third, but back to second. And again, that Porsche hybrid power, more than a thousand horsepower being unleashed there, out of the final corner, and lead back to second. These two are at it again, down the back straight. The Porsche is Mark Lieb, the red and white Toyota Gazoo racing car, is Kamui Kobayashi. We cannot override all the fuel cuts. We have a limit. Do not rush with classic. Take your moment. I do think that's interesting, trying to tell a racing driver not to use all the toys he's got all at the same time. Kobayashi has picked his moment, is now into second, and should hold on to it. Alex Wirtz, looking very cool. And Jackie X in the Porsche garage. Well, since Alex Brundle took the lead early on for G-Drive in the 26 car, the only time that they've lost it is through the pit stop cycle. In the background, the number 30 car just getting its service, the yellow and red car. That's coming out as well.
Another round of standard stops. And in LMP1, into the pit lane for the race leader. So that means the Toyota of Kobayashi briefly into the lead. Here's the pit stop that Kobayashi orders. So he now drops out of the lead. The number one Porsche will go around and retake it. Just under halfway to go. 98 laps completed. Means we're on for a distance record here in China. Porsche from Toyota, from Porsche, Toyota, Audi not having a great day. G Drive leading in LMP2. Ford dominating GTE Pro with the 67 car. And in GTE Arm, the pole sitter there having a good day too. 98 Aston Martin racing leading. Into the pit lane for the DC racing car. This is the one that Jackie Chan is involved with. Huge superstar worldwide, but a legend in these parts. And good to know that these guys are supporting the World Endurance Championship. Jackie Chan, a big fan of endurance racing. So here's the battle for third and fourth. Roman Dumas is in the black and white Porsche to our left, and he's just lost that position. Through goes the Toyota. Sebastian Buemi reprising his super move to the first corner. Several hours ago now, but we've seen this before from Porsche and Toyota. On the long back straight, the GT Ford has a tiny advantage. Can Olivier Pla make that a big enough advantage to go through into second? On James Collado in the Ferrari, he can. Collado tries the wide entry. He'll try and cut back on the inside. Make it difficult for Olivier Pla. But I think that is done and dusted for the 66 Ford. Harry Tinknell is ahead of this battle in the lead of class by nearly a minute now. Brilliant drive by Tinknell and Prio. Here's the move again. Watch the Ferrari goes right out to his left-hand side to try and cut back. But Olivier Pla has the move completed and down in the Ford pit. Uh, they're ready for lunch, it would appear. In from fourth position, our championship leaders for the Drivers' Championship, the number two Porsche. Romain Dumas getting out. And that is Neil Gianni getting in. The Swiss driver expertly fitting himself into that very tight space. Meanwhile, at their teammates, it's a, another driver swap coming up too. So here's the Toyota, and Kobayashi will go through into the lead roundabout right now, into turn number one. This is just like Fuji all over again, isn't it? On the pit stop cycle. The five Toyota had been in second, but that will lose that position on the pit stop. It is so close. One tiny slip here could be very, very costly. So here's Kobayashi. Came in from the lead. Porsche, as you can see from the graphic on the back straight, heading down towards the hairpin. Do you know what? This is going to be quite close, actually. 
Kobayashi gets out. Mike Conway is ready to put his seat insert in and follows it. Porsche coming to turn 16, the final corner. And here it comes. Oh, actually, it's not that close. And the number one car will go back through into the lead, controlling the race at the moment, but without a huge advantage. Now, the battle here is between Neil Jani and Seb Buemi. This is third and fourth at the front of the field and in LMP1 hybrid. The rebellion there, the darker red car ahead, already confirmed as privateer champions at the last round at Fuji. And look at the difference in performance there. The acceleration from that boost of hybrid power allows the two works cars from the manufacturers to go through into turn one. Mike Conway's on the pit lane and this is not a scheduled stop. Left rear puncture, I'm guessing, just one tire being brought out. That was just 11 laps for Conway. That's changing the strategy for Toyota. You know, they might be able to make a virtue out of this problem because they needed a splash at the end of the race. Effectively, they've just done it now. Harry Tinknell, the Englishman from Devon, brings the leading GTE Pro car, the Ford GT, into the pit lane. And Andy Prio, the very proud Channel Islander from Guernsey, gets himself in. This is second place in LMP2. Sean Galeil brought that car in. He's the man behind this effort. Done a good job bringing this whole team together. The 36 Signatech Alpine is leading the championship and needs to finish the race to be confirmed as LMP2 champions, doing exactly what they need to do at the moment in seconds. Now, here's our battle again out on the circuit. This is for position. Toyota and Porsche once again. We've seen this action before. And once again at turn five, the overtake is completed. But that might not be the end of the story. Well, it looks pretty decisive there. Nice, clean move down the inside. Copy off, off slap, off slap. Use box button, you stay in. Now this is very important for the Drivers' Championship. The number two team are leading that. Second place, the number six, will go through into second place. It's the second Toyota that could play a part here. If it can get ahead of the number two, effectively it takes points away from the leaders in the championship and helps their Toyota teammates. All looks very relaxed down at Toyota, but they now have a chance of the win. Because of that short run, that means that the number one Porsche has one more pit stop to do than the number six Toyota, and this is it. All very well organised, but there must be a bit of tension down at the World Championship winning number one car. Now watch for the two Toyotas. The number five car goes through into the lead now, but that car, remember, owes us two pit stops before the end of the race. It's the number six car that's in with a chance of the win. That only has one more pit stop before the end. Oh, hang on a minute, this is not right. They can't go to the end from here in the number six Toyota, so this is an unscheduled stop. And, oh no, it's another, it's another puncture. We're hearing from Louise in the pit lane. Left rear puncture again for Mike Conway, and that's taken them out of the chance of the victory. Through goes the number one Porsche and retakes the lead from the number five Toyota. That we expected, but the drama's gone on behind. Two punctures for the number six car, advantage Porsche. Uh, I think we're in pretty good shape. So uh, I ran a, uh, a bit of a hybrid set, so we got that set out of the way. Uh, Brendan's been flying, obviously Timo's double was really nice. So in the end, we just need to uh, have a boring finish now and um, try and get the car home, obviously in one piece. And, uh, but Toyota 6, obviously, it looks like they've had a few a few issues there, obviously, with a couple of punches, maybe, so... Yeah, would have been nice to beat them in a fair fight, but um, let's see how we go. We've got, we've got a long way to go. Now, the 6 car is better placed in the Drivers' Championship, so I'd expect a phone call to the number 5 to just let their teammates through anytime soon. Don't want to hold them up, and indeed, that's clearly already happened, because down the back straight, easy as you like, and the two Toyotas swap over 
in what is third and fourth position at the moment. That will become second and third when Porsche number two pits for its final stop in GTE Am. That should be the final scheduled stop, at least, for the AF Corsa number 83 car. Not quite with the championship in hand at the moment. They could win it here. Most likely, it will go to Bahrain. Uh, Bruno Senna with his lucky panda hat on. Well, at least, I think it's his lucky panda hat. At the moment, the 43 car is in third position and it needs to win to keep the LMP2 championship alive. In fact, the 36, which is in fourth position and just behind it, is the championship leader at the moment. Nico Lapierre in that blue number 36 doesn't need to make that pass, but I bet they'd like to be on the podium. Now, this might only be second position in the race, but... It is crucial for the Drivers' Championship. The number two team lead it. The number six team want to close down and take some points away from them and close that gap going to Bahrain. And it's very, very tight indeed in the last three quarters of an hour of the six hours of China. Bit of room here, very defensive by the Porsche. Now, will that give the opportunity on the cutback to the Toyota? It does. And that looked fairly simple, actually. Just wonder if Neil Jani in the number two Porsche is losing a little bit of grip there. Rob Lightman down in the Toyota pit likes that. That looked very easy. Number six car, remember, on all tyres, but doing very, very well indeed. Now, here comes Jani down the inside. That's optimistic. Way too optimistic. No way he was going to get that stopped with dirt on the tyres, with all of that rubber pickup. And in fact, he's lost ground there. And that might actually push him back into the clutches of the second Toyota. Now, GTE Arm, still plenty to play for here. The 83 AF Corsa Ferrari has championship aspirations, sitting in second at the moment with the Porsche, the blue and white car, in third. In GTE Pro, what a day for Harry Tinknell and Andy Prio, they have driven away from the field. Even their teammates have not been able to keep pace with them. Well over 50 seconds of a lead between Tinknell and Oli Pla. Yeah, I mean, still half an hour to go, but we've had a really good day. Um, the pit stops have been great again. Brilliant couple of, couple of stints at the beginning of the race, which really kept us in a strong position, gave us track position. And um, obviously, um, you know, it's been a really good weekend for us so far. It'll be lovely to finish the job off the second weekend in the row, but still half an hour to go, so we're all nervous. GTE Arm, um, once again, the form team have come good. The 98 Aston Martin and uh, Matthias Lauder, perhaps the quiet man of the team, just gets on, does his business very well indeed, and he's bringing that car home to another victory. Our leader is the number one Porsche, Brendan Hartley, with under 10 minutes now to clock another victory for the world champions. They're not giving up their world championship without a fight, are they? Traffic in front is the 83 Ferrari, down the middle straight, and then the chicane left right. Hitting the kerbs. Even at this stage. And now through the banked corner onto the long, fast back straight. LMP2 battle for third position on the track and effectively to keep the championship running. The 43 car needed to win this race. Nico Lapierre is fine where he is. I'm sure the team are telling him to hold back. But he's not that type of driver. He wants to be on the podium. Concern faces in the Alpine pit and... Oh, no wonder. This has just happened in front of the championship leading 36 car. Two of the GT Am cars getting together. In fact, that was second and third in GT Am. Albuquerque goes down the inside and causes mayhem. It's the last lap of the race and Brendan Hartley is bringing the number one Porsche through to another victory. 
the 919 hybrid comes through the final corner and will win in China. That's the chicken flag. That's the chicken flag. Good morning, nice one. Good job. Crew, fantastic job. Good pit stops, good nose change. Well done, everybody. Another World Championship, back-to-back -back manufacturer's titles in the FIA World Endurance Championship for Porsche. The number one crew have won four out of the last five races. Unreal. Um, incredibly close at the start. Was it, the fight was on with the Toyotas. I think they were a bit unlucky with the, with the punctures. But we didn't put a foot wrong in the crew, engineers, strategy, us drivers, not a scratch on the car. Awesome day, so yeah, thanks to everyone who, who helps support us and um, yeah, very happy. In LMP2, it's two in a row now for G-Drive Racing, Will Stevens, Alex Brundle and Roman Rusinov. But the real joy in the paddock here at Shanghai is for the 36 car, only fourth here but enough points to ensure the championship in LMP2. Steph, Nico, they did an incredible job. We were fighting for the podium till the very end, but the most important job was done. We're officially world champions and there's no better feeling in, in the world. LMP2 third position for RGR. Bittersweet as they couldn't keep the championship alive. A fabulous second in just their second outing for the yellow and red car from ESM. G-Drive on the top step. Another dominating performance from the Ford GT. And once again, the 67 team of Harry Tinknell and Andy Prio have taken the victory. We got the pole yesterday and we've, we've won it today. So absolutely brilliant, you know, great to, to work with this little youngster as well. He's doing a brilliant job and, um, you know, he's on a roll. And uh, two wins for me, my 54th win now in the career. So I'm very, very happy to have done that with Ford. Important third position for AF Corsa, Ferrari sneak ahead of Aston Martin in the manufacturer's title in GT. Another first and second for Ford. <laughs> Success in GTE Am for Aston Martin and winning is becoming a habit for Paul Dallalana. Pedro Lamy and Matthias Lauda. Three wins in a row. It's fantastic, but unfortunately we're still second in the championship. Uh, I think 18 points behind is just one left, but still it's not over yet. We still have a small chance. The last lap incident meant that the result was changed around post-race. All the right crews are there, but second and third changed places. So Ferrari in second and Porsche in third. At the head of the field, the podium celebrations, always intense, but with a little more significance for Porsche Racing, as they have taken the World Championship for manufacturers. Two Toyotas on the podium, and a close battle here in Shanghai means that the Drivers' Championship goes to Bahrain, and Toyota are still in the hunt there. But for the moment, the celebrations all belong to Porsche and their hybrid 919 team. Another win for the number one Porsche team ahead of two Toyotas. It could have been even closer except for that puncture. G-Drive win in LMP2, Ford have once again been the class of the field in GTE Pro and GTE Am belongs to Aston Martin. Manufacturers world champions twice now and twice in a row for Porsche. Out 
another great event at Shanghai. And as we bid it and China farewell, we look forward to the last six hours of racing in 2016. And that will be in the heat of the desert in Bahrain. We don't have to get high. Lines, curbs, straights and mirages. Sand and sun. The last chapter of the legend. World Endurance Championship. International event. Three men at board on the grid. Break the check. Break the check. We go direction to the grid. Green flag. And straight away, the Audis are getting into it down the inside the seven car. Oh, the Timing. Corners. The Arabian Night Race. Six hours of Bahrain on 18th and 19th November. The spirit of Le Mans is coming to Bahrain.